Areas of interest could form from Julia's remnants this week. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Weather Bulletin for October 11th. Right now, we have no tropical cyclones anymore around the world. We have two remnant lows in the form of Julia and Belita down in the Southern Hemisphere. So far, we've had 73 storms uh, around the world in 2022. Well, let's look at the Atlantic, and there is an area of interest that could develop out of the northern side of the spoils of Julia in the Bay of Capici. We've marked 10%. National Hurricane Center a little bit higher on their latest update, uh, but the chance is there, a small one, for development and a brief development over there as well. In the eastern Pacific, on the southern side of Ex Julia, there's also another area of interest that could develop, and that was a little bit later on in time. It's just starting to get itself developed now. 20% um, chance and could develop into a tropical cyclone along the coast of Mexico later on. In the western Pacific, it's bustling with areas of interest. It's just which one's going to be dominant? What happens next? Two 50% chances there that we've marked in the Philippine Sea, and on either side, two lower chances of development one in the South China Sea that could get going later on, and one to the east there over the open western Pacific. The remnants of Belita battling on for a little bit longer before they'll get completely um, absorbed and will start to steer towards the west. Well then, let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery. This is what the Atlantic is looking like right now, and you can see what's left of uh, uh, Julia's bands bursting across the Western Caribbean and across the Gulf of Mexico. Fascinating to watch how this system has transformed itself uh, into a really large but uh, destroyed system, you could say. Um, so fascinating how it's occurred over the last few hours and out of all of this mess we could see some more systems potentially uh, on either side of the Central American uh, continent, if you want to call it that. Eastern Pacific looking fairly quiet out there and this is what we're looking at right now, the general picture across uh, that what's left of Julia. And once again, so much going on on the north and on the south side of this. Northern side probably a little bit more well defined than on the southern side, but certainly rainfall still falling over those areas of Central America right now. We could be looking at maybe four to six further inches of rainfall in many of those areas into parts of Mexico as well. As we zoom out and look across the rest of the Atlantic, there's not too much going on as we look over there um, and back to Julia or what's left of it. Um, still looking fascinating on that satellite imagery. Unfortunately, I've lost my visual feed here. Um, and this will also show you the Central Pacific, some, uh, an area that people have been talking about a little bit, uh, is not likely to develop any kind of tropical characteristics, but an interesting thing to watch well to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. So that's a look at the whole Western Hemisphere. And in the east, this is what the Western Pacific is showing right now. A lot of general storm activity and uh, real chances of those two systems which are becoming more pronounced. The one near the coast of the Philippines and one near the Mariana Islands. And two other areas either side of it which could develop later on down the line. It's a mess, uh, but there are going to be storms that form out of this most likely. Indian Ocean, you can still trace the remnants of Balita there, uh, way down there in the Southern Hemisphere. Northern Hemisphere looking fairly calm. We've obviously got the usual thunderstorms across India and the Indochina region. In the Australian region, things looking fairly quiet here as well with a few frontal systems blowing through. And it looks like chances of tropical systems near, uh, near Fiji and Tonga have completely diminished. We had, well, we didn't even mark them on our official charts, but I thought there might have been a sneaky little chance, but it hasn't transpired. Well, sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific look pretty good for any future storms, potentially one grazing the coast of western Mexico later on in the week. 
30 degrees Celsius, dropping a little bit as, this, as the system potentially moves further west. In the Atlantic, for any future systems, no clear um, candidates yet, apart from the remnants of Julia, but very warm sea surface temperatures persist as we may get some late season activity. In the Eastern Hemisphere, in the Indian Ocean, there's an area of 30 degrees Celsius water still off the east coast of India, uh, in West Bengal particularly, and over the uh, Ganges River Delta, and over the coast of Myanmar as well. Into the uh, Western Pacific, still very warm sea surface temperatures all around. They are starting to retreat a little bit along the coast of Japan, falling now to about 26 degrees and only just holding on. It's getting later in the season, so the, the conditions for favorability really starts dropping off a cliff when you get to those higher latitudes after around this time of year really. With the La Nina still well in effect, very visible here, uh, but we are still above average in quite a few of the key areas, the western pacific there, tropics, and the Atlantic, apart from an area around Florida and the Carolinas, no, get, no surprises to what caused that, but generally above average there. In the Atlantic, for oceanic heat content is looking good for the Caribbean and still through to the Bahamas. Uh, where the area where Julia passed through is actually improving a little bit compared to when Julia was over the area. And in the Eastern Pacific, looks like those are dropping off a little bit now as well. Western Pacific, they're dropping off slightly but still very decent conditions across the whole Philippine Sea. Um, there's really nothing to go against the storm in that area. Alright, let's take a look at some of the models then. You can see the evolution of both of these systems from the GFS model from its point of view. And both of these systems do appear to get a circulation of sorts. Whether it actually develops into anything more substantial is another matter. GFS is not keen on the Bay of Capici storm. Um, and in the Eastern, Eastern Pacific, only a little bit more conducive there from the GFS model. Still doesn't develop it into a tropical storm there. Um, not even at the very end of that five day period. So GFS says nothing will happen. The Western Pacific, it doesn't do anything with the invest near the Philippines, but some of its energy transfers to the South China Sea that develops into a broad tropical storm and eventually impacts Vietnam. And then this other system, the one that we're tracking near the Marianas, it does a big loop around there a common low pressure center region um, and rounding the bend there towards the left towards the west and then southwest and then it eventually starts to really develop a tight eye feature there and possibly develops quite substantially take a look at the estimated rainfall values across the whole south china sea region and the philippine islands we're looking at pretty high amounts over the northern part of luzon and also for parts of hainan and mainly along the uh, coast of vietnam as well later on in that seven day period uh, taiwan is expected to get massive amounts of rain from the other tropical storm up to 30 inches is what the gfs is forecasting for that area whether that happens or not is another matter and 33 inches there along the coast of Vietnam which is really very substantial um, again those two high values are later on in that run so that really could change but I think that 15 inches there in the Philippines is pretty much locked in that's just over 350 millimeters expected over Luzon in the longer range this is what the Eastern Pacific looks like and uh, let's see what happens because I can't remember well nothing yet and um, there is a system that forms much later on in that run right near the very end of that 10 day period and there it is on the 21st of October looks like it's about to ram into Mexico as a tight small tropical storm uh, but elsewhere in this whole region there's nothing going on indeed nothing going on in the Atlantic either and just that system that starts to develop near the end of that period Westpac, what happens to that typhoon then? It slams into Taiwan, probably as a category four there, really powerful, and its remnants continue southwestwards, passing the Philippine Islands and way down into the South China Sea, across the east coast of Vietnam, possibly there as well, as it continues to dive down after that big landfall. A very odd track that would be, if it's still traceable as an actual tropical cyclone through that period, but something to really watch out for for Taiwan, in the next 10 days very low confidence forecast with everything that's going on though so i wouldn't bet on it just yet indian ocean also a system forming here we've been watching this for quite a while and it's now well within the 10 day period and possibly within the seven day period for its at least its initial development 
also this is getting closer to fruition as well for a significant tropical cyclone in the Indian Ocean it's that time of year for it so there could be a large extremely large when you look at that and develops into a very powerful category 3 storm that's all the serious stuff out of the way you can scan the barcode and take a look at the force 13 store well, there we have individual and full season storm animations available on request uh, bespoke and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt amongst our many other various products well in the silly range that's day 10 through 16 we obviously don't have much uh, confidence in that part and look at all that wobbling going on from that tropical storm there that first develops in within that 10 day period and it's still going there later on in that period and becomes a hurricane that would be one for the books what an erratic track that one has and lasts for quite a while there through that uh, very long range period very interesting uh, of course if that did happen it would also cause potentially some effects along the coast of Mexico rainfall and so on Western Pacific, what happens there in that later period after that typhoon happens? Well, some of its energy develops again into another tropical storm in the South China Sea. There it is, brewing up, and then it turns round and slams again into Vietnam, another one. And very late on that period, right at the end, another storm brewing. And who knows, for all we know, that could become a massive typhoon for the Philippines. But that is extremely long way out. Just thinking of the time of year, we got to be prepared for potentially big typhoons impacting the Philippines it always happens well not always but a lot of them happen around this time of year Indian Ocean there's that storm that makes landfall in eastern India I think that is Odisha and then it moves inland and dies off gradually uh, but a very powerful storm that makes landfall there this is in the extremely long range but certainly within that 10 day period that thing could develop into a big storm and then it continues off towards well the uh, central part of India there uh, and some of its energy might survive into the Arabian Sea there as it curls round. You can see what's a ghost of a feature there. Well then, on this day back in 1983 we had Category 5 Hurricane Raymond determined by our analyst team to have been stronger than the official peak. Uh, Tropical Depression Sonia was having a down day uh, it re-strengthened again later on and in the western pacific we had Joe in the uh, south china sea and Ida which was passing close to Japan both tropical storms at this point but the highlight was of course Raymond looking very picturesque in the eastern pacific and not hitting anywhere we like storms like that well then back to today the next name on the Atlantic naming list right now is Carl in the Eastern Pacific we're looking out for Roslyn and in the Central Pacific it's still Hone and it won't come from that system in the higher latitudes right now. In the Western Pacific our next name there is Sonka in the North Indian Ocean we're still waiting for Citrang but it could be coming closer. 73 storms so far this year the average is 92 I'm think pretty confident that we'll get that far before the end of this year and in the Australian region, Darien is first up. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're now waiting for Chiniso. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back with more tomorrow night.